Zatanna introduces another DC character with a connection to Batman. Here, they give her a history with Bruce when they were younger, which makes for a nice flashback. This one ends up being an old-fashioned caper with some sleight of hand thrown in. Its climax on the villain's giant plane is definitely worth discussing. Zatanna is a famous magician who is putting on a big show at the Gotham Mint. Her biggest trick of the night sees the entire building disappear in a giant puff of smoke with $10 million on display inside. When she makes the Mint reappear, the money is missing, and she's immediately arrested. Bruce Wayne and Alfred are shown in the audience, as we see that Bruce once knew her while training in the art of escapism with Zatanna's renowned father, Zatara. He knows she's innocent, and as Batman, breaks Zatanna out of police custody, and the pair begin searching for the person who framed her. Paul Dini penned the script, as he did for Zatanna's other significant appearance in the DCAU, that being down the road in Justice League Unlimited. Interestingly, there are two directors credited for this episode. Dick Sebast was originally working on it before apparently departing the show. Dan Reba then took over. In the production order, this was only the second episode he took that position on, the first being the fantastic mini-movie See No Evil, which we reviewed last year. Whenever we see Bruce training to become Batman, it feels special. That's the case in the three-minute flashback sequence where Wayne is training with Zatara. They changed his design again to look younger with Kevin Conroy using that lighter voice we heard in Night of the Ninja. Speaking of which, this is even earlier in his journey than when he was training under Yoru Sensei. Bruce mentions that he's leaving for Japan the following day, tying these two episodes together. His relationship with Zatanna is shown to be yet another lost love Wayne could have been happy with, but it occurring when he was still a young man makes it unique from the others. There's an obvious connection between the two. However, in maybe my favorite moment of the episode, it's clear that the pair aren't exactly destined to be together. Here, pick a card. I'll tell your future. Hmm, I see emotion, intensity, two of hearts. Joker. Great stuff. It's also worth noting that, unlike his time in Japan, he never gave Zatara or his daughter his real name. Instead, he goes by John Smith. Even later on, when Batman drops a hint that he's the same man who learned from her father, Zatanna doesn't know him as Bruce Wayne, and still refers to him as John in her message. With all that backstory, Zatanna herself is a decently well-rounded character for one appearance. She has a background cameo in chemistry, but doesn't show up in the DCAU again until Justice League Unlimited made it to the airwaves. One thing missing from her design is her trademark fishnet tights. She doesn't even really have them later on in her JLU appearances. This was supposedly due to them being too difficult to animate. As for her actual magical powers, those do show up in JLU. Here, she's portrayed as just an illusionist. Zatara is voiced in the flashbacks by the late Vincent Chiavelli, which is pretty cool since he also made an appearance in Batman Returns. The character is said to be dead by the time this episode happens. We hear this in a few lines from Zatanna as Batman questions what her current status is after years of no communication. He sinuously even asks if she's married, which shows that Bruce is probably still attracted to her. Earlier, Wayne tries telling Alfred that he was a different person back when he knew her, but the butler's response is priceless. Yes, intense, driven, moody. She'd never recognize you now. This is technically a spoiler, but it's incredibly evident who the antagonist of the story is right from the beginning. Dr. Montague Kane is a magic debunker, and sets up a very Indiana Jones-style trap for Batman and Zatanna when they track him down to his house. His design sort of reminds me of Orson Welles, and the last name Kane may suggest that was the intention, but he's got a villainous tinge to his look here. Michael York's voice gives him a very distinct personality, and he even calls Batman by a familiar name. Keep your distance, detective! Some of York's inflections and overall accent allude a little bit to David Warner's Ra's al Ghul. York also voiced Vertigo in Off Balance, which was the debut of Ra's, so there's more than one connection. Whether this was meant to draw comparisons or not, I don't really know, but you can certainly make the case that those choices had a purpose. Kane stole the $10 million and skipped town in an enormous state-of-the-art aircraft. The climax there is a strong one. It's filled with high-rising action, escapist tricks, Batman manually controlling the altitude of the plane, some tape visible in a few of the frames, and Zatanna delivering an appropriate one-liner. Don't you know? A magician never does the same trick twice! 
Zatanna is a pretty good episode. It's always good to see some background on Bruce's time traveling the world, and having a friend instead of an enemy come back into his life made for a fun little adventure. See for yourself if this episode has enough of the magic you're looking for.